This Friday, April 22nd, is Earth Day in the United States. And in honor of Earth Day, I'm going to be talking about a group of organisms that are often overlooked but are extremely vital to our ecosystems, lichens. Lichens are not technically a plant, but they do photosynthesize. Lichens are composed of two parts, a fungus and an algae or a cyanobacteria. Because the fungi can't make its own food and photosynthesize, it cultivates a photosynthesizing partner, basically making it a tiny, tiny farmer. Lichens are found all over the world and they can grow on just about anything, from trees to rocks to this lichen I found on some asphalt. And it's a common misconception, but lichens do not harm trees when they grow on them. Lichens come in four varieties, squamulose, crustose, fruticose, and foliage. This is an easy initial way to just categorize them by appearance, and it also shows how much variety there is in lichens. Being composed of two different types of organisms makes reproduction a little bit interesting for lichens. They have two options to do this. The first option is to create serida. These are genetically identical protrusions off of the lichen that can hopefully break off and grow somewhere else. The other option is to create fungal spores called apothecia. These, however, only consist of fungus cells, so to grow, they have to find a new photosynthesizing partner. Lichens might seem small and unassuming, but they're actually vitally important. In the Arctic tundra, for example, they help insulate the ground, and wherever they grow, they're an important food source for many animals. And because they can grow in really harsh areas, they're really important for establishing new life in an area, and when they die, they break down and enrich the soil. Unfortunately, many things are causing lichens to disappear. This includes pollution pesticide use, habitat loss, and invasive species competition. Lichens are also extremely sensitive to sulfur dioxide, an industrial pollutant, so lichens can't grow in areas of poor air quality. Conversely, this means areas that do have lichens are generally have really good air quality. Well, what can we do about this catastrophic decline in lichen populations? There are over 5,400 species of lichen in North America alone, but only two are listed on the endangered species list. You can help by getting outside, observing lichens in your area, and telling people about them. You can also lower your pesticide use and support movements that decrease pollution, and those will do more than help just lichens. This Earth Day, I encourage you to look closely at the natural world and focus on animals and plants that might often be overlooked in conservation efforts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about lichens, and I hope I inspired you to help in their conservation. If you'd like more botany content in your life, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. I'm Brilliant Botany on all of those platforms. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.